Hi, Peter Kennedy here from PKYS. I'm going to show you how to program your MultiPlus using Victron Connect. You'll find a link below to the blog post where I give you recommended settings for different kinds of batteries. The MultiPlus is on the wall behind me. It's turned on, connected to batteries, and I've connected it to my computer using the Mark III USB interface. I already updated the firmware, which is shown in another video, and now we're going to jump right into the programming. First, I connect to my device. Then, to access the programming menu, I click on the gear wheel icon in the top right. We have to enable settings, which requires a password, which I'll tell you at the end of this video. This gets us access to the main menu tabs for programming, and we're going to go through each one in turn, starting with the general tab. Here we get to verify the system frequency and voltage and the AC input current limit. The AC current limit is the total amount of incoming AC power. Typically, in a 120 volt system, it will be either 30 amps or 50 amps. When you check the Overrule by Remote button, it allows you to change the setting on the fly using your remote panel as you move from place to place. My system is just a demo, and the only available place to plug in is a wall outlet, so I'm going to set my limit to 15 amps. We're not going to change any of the other settings on this tab. We definitely do not want to check the Enable Battery Monitor button. The Multi can act as a simplified battery monitor if it's the only thing connected to the battery. That doesn't apply here. We have all kinds of other things connected to the battery, and we already have a separate battery monitor, so do not check the button. Next tab is the Grid settings. For the most part, you can leave these in their default settings. The one bit you might like to play with is the UPS function. Clicking on the link here explains in detail, but in summary, if you have a generator, you may need to disable this. Next tab is the inverter settings. You get to set the output voltage and frequency, leave the ground relay button alone. It's only used for certain specialized applications involving the auto transformer. I do like to play with the low voltage shutdown settings. These determine how soon the inverter stops working because of low voltage. By default, they'll run your battery all the way into the ground. So by setting them a bit before, you'll extend the life of your battery. Once you change the low voltage shutdown, the other settings will change automatically. There needs to be a spread between shutdown and startup, so it doesn't keep cycling from one to the other. And the alarm, of course, needs to be set to occur before the shutdown. Note, if you set the settings too high, you might get a low voltage alarm right in the middle of programming. AES is turned off by default. AES stands for Automatic Economy Switch, and there are a couple of variations you can use in the settings. They're explained in the help file. It's a way of leaving the inverter on all the time in low power mode, waiting to detect the demand, and then turning on automatically when needed. Most people don't use this mode, because although it uses less power than leaving the multi on all the time, it still uses more than if you turned it off when you don't need it. Power Assist is on by default. It allows the inverter to come on to augment your incoming shore power, so the multi can put out more power than it gets in. If you leave this feature on, then you might need bigger output wires than input wires. In my case, this is a demo system, and the AC wires will already be small, so I'm definitely going to turn this feature off. This means we won't need to adjust the boost factor either. The default is 2.0. Next up, we have the charger tab. The charger is enabled by default. In some multis, the charge current is throttled back from the max. I'm going to set mine to the max, which in this case is 120 amps. Then I'm going to set the recommended absorption voltage for my Victron Smart Lithium batteries, which is 14.2, the float voltage to 13.5, and the absorption time to 1 hour. Consult your battery manufacturer or my blog post for the settings for your system. We're going to turn on the Lithium Battery button. Clicking on the link tells you what this does. When we complete the charger tab, it tells us the device needs to be reset. In fact, it said that all along, but I waited till the end to do it. After the reset, we'll just take a look at the AC input control to see that there are all kinds of options available that we're not going to use in this system. Finally, we can just take a quick look at the help and manual section. The VE bus configuration guide is the official guide to all of this. We'll put the link below. Then there's a guide to using the MultiPlus with a generator that covers some of the detailed tricky bits requiring special settings that you might encounter. And it 
at the end is a guide to adaptive charging, which doesn't really apply if we're using lithium batteries. And I promise to give you the password at the end. It's all lowercase z, z, z.